Hi friends, welcome to Mega Technical Hub. In the last session, we discussed about the important topic that is resonance. We also studied about the natural frequency and what is critical speed. What happens when the natural frequency matches with the forcing frequency? In today's session, we will discuss about some of the examples of this resonance. What happens when vane pass frequency or Germes frequency matches with the natural frequency? What is the behavior of the vibration for any component? Before going for the examples, I will brief about the resonance once again. When the natural frequency matches with the forcing frequency, there will be an increase in amplitude of the vibration. That condition is called as resonance. Then what is natural frequency? It is a frequency of free vibration of a system. If you consider any component, it has multiple natural frequencies. That is first mode of natural frequency, second mode of natural frequency, or third mode of natural frequency and so on. These different modes of natural frequency I will cover in the next sessions. The natural frequency has the formula of 1 upon 2 pi square root of k by m. k is the stiffness, m is the mass. If you vary the stiffness or mass, you can change the natural frequency of any component. Now, how to determine the natural frequency of any component by using a bump test that is you need to use a mallet or a timber. In case of bump test you need to hit any component by means of a mallet or a timber and need to connect the vibration analyzer nearby that hitting point that accelerometer here. Then you will get a spectrum in the vibration analyzer. For example, in this case, this component might be having three natural frequencies, first, second and third. First natural frequency is around 38.9 Hz, second is 42 Hz, third is 90.4 Hz. So in this case, by using bump test, you can determine the natural frequency of component. So it has multiple number of natural frequencies. Now what is forcing frequency? If any defect occurs any component, then vibration will increase. This vibration having certain frequency for certain defect. There may be unbalance, there may be misalignment, looseness, bend shaft, eccentricity, vane pass frequency or piping frequency. These are some of the defects. This has different frequencies. This is called as a forcing frequency. For any mechanical component, it should be designed in such a way that it should not operate within plus or minus 20% of this natural frequency. It may be either plus 20% or minus 20% of the natural frequency. If we consider any component running at 25 hertz that is 1500 rpm and it has a natural frequency of 22 hertz if the component is having unbalance if any component is having unbalance then it has a frequency of 1 into rpm in this case the speed is 25 hertz 1x is nothing but 25 hertz. In this case, it has natural frequency of 22 hertz. So, there will be a drastical increase of vibration because of this resonance. Because this natural frequency is very near to the forcing frequency of 25 hertz. So, if there is a, no resonance, then there may be a vibration of around 4 mm per second vertical axis amplitude horizontal is frequency if the resonance happens in this case then this amplitude will increase substantially 
then there may be a vibration of around 40 to 50 mm per second based on the damping characteristic of the equipment so in order to avoid this resonance case we need to have the natural frequency either plus or minus 20 percent of this speed means plus 20 percent means around 30 hertz it is coming minus 20 percent means around 20 hertz so this natural frequency either it may be should be lower than the 20 hertz or it should be higher than the 30 hertz it should not be in between the 20 hertz to 30 hertz i want to explain by considering the centrifugal pump example here the pump is having the speed of 25 hertz that is 1500 rpm in this case there may be some cavitation problem cavitation means when the suction pressure below the vapor pressure then the vapor explodes and it damages the impeller in this case suppose the cavitation happens here the number of veins is around 6 if you consider here for this pump then vein pass frequency is number of veins into rpm 6 is the number of veins and 25 hertz is the speed then you need to multiply the number of uh, uh, veins into rpm that is 150 hertz is the vein pass frequency in the frequency spectrum you will get the vein pass at 150 hertz that is 6 into x it is 6 into x okay the amplitude may be around 4.5 mm per second if the equipment is not properly designed in the initial stage and it has the natural frequency of 140 hertz it is very near to the vein pass frequency of 150 hertz then what happens here there will be a substantial increase of this vein pass frequency in case of resonance the 4.5 mm in will increase maybe more than 60 mm per second there will be a drastic in increase in vibration because of this resonance because this natural frequency 140 hertz very near to the vein pass frequency because the forcing frequency is here the cavitation problem in order to avoid this drastic increase in vibration you need to vary the natural frequency for plus or minus 20 percentage so 150 hertz is the wind pass frequency if you consider that 20 percent plus means here 180 hertz minus means here around 120 hertz so we need to vary the stiffness or need to vary the mass so that its natural frequency should be less than 120 hertz or more than 180 hertz it should not be in between the 120 to 180 hertz in this case in this type it should be properly designed one more example i am considering here gearbox here a and b two gears they are meshing with each other if you consider any defect in the gear teeth maybe pitting maybe scuffing or maybe there may be a gear tooth breakage if you consider here for the gear mesh frequency it might be having 5 hertz for example the gear mesh frequency is 5 hertz because of this defects it gives the gear mesh frequency of 5 hertz here what is gear mesh frequency number of teeth into rpm at 5 hertz you are getting the peak vertical axis it is amplitude horizontal axis and frequency the vibrations may be might be around 5.5 mm per second okay 
again the gearbox is not properly designed in the initial stage and it has the any one of the component having the natural frequency of 480 hertz then it is very near to the 500 that is gear mesh frequency in this case again there will be a drastic increase in the amplitude of the gear mesh frequency so you there might be increase in vibration of around 70 mm per second because of this resonance so in order to avoid this resonance because of this gear mesh frequency you need to vary the natural frequency by increasing the stiffness or or varying the mass that is already you know that is square root of k by m so you need to vary the stiffness or mass such that that uh, that uh, natural frequency should be more than or less than 20 percent of this gear mesh frequency here in case of final gear mesh frequency plus 20 percent means around 600 hertz minus 20 percent means around 400 hertz so it will be designed initially at the such that the natural frequency should be lower than 400 hertz or it should be more than the 600 hertz it should not be in between the 400 to 600 hertz to avoid the case of resonance so i explained clearly about by taking some of the examples of n pass frequency gear mesh frequency speed what happens when this matches with the natural frequency what is the behavior of the vibration how the vibration amplitude will increase because of this resonance if you understand more about this resonance, you can refer my earlier videos also. Thank you.